everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care video series. Uh, again, I'm honored to be joined by Dr. Peter Lee. Uh, Dr. Lee is head of Microsoft Research um, and, uh, and, and an AI enthusiast. Uh, and he will join me in this. I don't know if this is a great Pentagon, but at least it's a house. He will join me in this <laughs> Pentagon slash house. Uh, Peter, welcome to the show. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm still getting a thrill out of being brought onto the screen this way. <laughs> yeah, how do you like your house? Is it big enough? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, so what I wanted to ask you today is, um, you know, uh, your personal use of Gen AI, I guess, or AI in general, and like what you would advise people, you know, people that are, know it's exciting, know it's something they should learn and know something about, but um, but maybe struggle to figure out well, how, how, I mean, I'm not an engineer, maybe, you know, how, how do I learn these tools and stay current so I can be, you know, important and, and help my organization move forward in this new, new world. So I wonder if you can kind of talk through how you think about that, what you personally do, for instance, that kind of thing. Sure, uh, Don. And, you know, as we've talked about before in previous conversations, um, I think we're all lacking in imagination. Um, and I put myself in that same uh, boat. Uh, but uh, for sure, uh, generative AI is something that I use every day. Um, even back uh, uh, now, two and a half years ago, when uh, with Kerry Goldberg and Zach Kohani, we wrote our book about GPT-4 in medicine. Even then, I was using GPT-4 to just read my complete blood test results and tell me, you know, should I be worried about my elevated LDL? And, you know, is there anything else I should be looking out for? And I think those have held up and continue to be good use cases. Uh, and, um, and increasingly, we're seeing uh, custom applications uh, where health system portals or um, other types of uh, personal, you know, health applications are integrating uh, this kind of capability directly in those applications, so you don't have to copy and paste uh, do something like ChatGPT. More in my line of work here, leading Microsoft Research, uh, one of the things that happens, of course, is uh, there's a tremendous amount of uh, research that happens across our 14 laboratories around the world. I always feel uh, some obligation to stay on top of the work that's going on. And several times a day, people will send me drafts of research reports uh, to kind of report on what they're doing. And honestly, it's impossible to keep up. Um, and so one of the simplest things is to get the assistance of AI to read these papers and summarize them for me, uh, suggest places uh, where I should zoom in. And increasingly, the AI is having the memory to understand you know, what I've seen before in my context and, and is getting smarter uh, about uh, those things. When I'm creating my own content, um, I personally don't use AI to write for me, to write my emails or to write my reports or memos. Uh, I, I write them, um, but um, oftentimes, uh, I can engage in a conversation to improve these things. So uh, to give you two examples, working for the National Academies, I was leading a report writing effort. And as is oftentimes the case, um, you get to a point where you have to come up with some recommendations, things for uh, the community or for the nation to do. And uh, in this particular case, I felt that the report was very strong, but that the recommendations that we made weren't really very crisp or actionable. So uh, one thing you can do is uh, load this into a conversation uh, in a generative AI system. Um, in, in my case, I was using a co-pilot here at Microsoft. Uh, and then explain uh, that I'm not satisfied with the recommendations given. Uh, I don't feel that they're crisp enough, they're, they're actionable enough. Uh, can we have a conversation and brainstorm about how to improve this? Um, and to engage in that sort of brainstorming conversation, um, you know, it, it really helps to sort of create 
new ideas. Uh, uh, I even do that conversation sometimes in my commute to and from work, um, you know, uh, through the car's Bluetooth. Um, uh, another example similar, I had to give a commencement Actually, speech. Actually, before you, before you um, go into the next example, it's interesting how you phrase that. So instead of asking, you know, the, the um, LLM to just write better recommendations, your sort of prompt was, let's have a conversation on it, or let's brainstorm on yeah. it, it seems. And I think that's a helpful way to think about allowing these tools to help you without taking away your own voice. It's just... That's right. Prompting yeah. as a... As, to be a sounding board versus, hey, give me the answer. Yeah, and you know maybe I'm a dinosaur and uh, I should be sure. <laughs> giving the AI more responsibility. But you know, for me, uh, I think a big part of the meaning and purpose I have in my work, and and I feel better about the quality of the end sure. if uh, if you know I've uh, done this. Um, you know, I, I wrote this commencement speech, um, and then um, I asked the organizers how much time I would have on stage. And they told me, you must stay strictly under 15 minutes. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I uh, asked co-pilot, okay, I'm giving this commencement speech. Uh, how long would the speech take to deliver? And um, co-pilot responded, well, with a normal cadence, it would take about 19 minutes. Ah, okay. And so then I could explain, oh, that's a problem because I've been told to stay strictly within 15 minutes. Um, and uh, I wonder if you have suggestions about, you know, how I might tighten this up. And again, it's a conversation. Right. I can reject right. some ideas. I can accept some ideas. We yeah. can go back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's something that, let's face it, none of my coworkers would feel like it would be an exciting thing to have a conversation with Peter Lee about how to shorten a speech. <laughs> and, That's and true. So, you have a you willing know, participant kind of... for nearly anything. Right. Hey there. I'm just popping in to say that I'd love to hear your comments and feedback on this video. I read all the comments, so let me know what you think. Let me know what suggestions you have for my next video by uh, putting in some comments uh, below the line here. Thanks. With the rise of uh, deep research um, sure. and agentic systems, uh, the, these researcher agents, if you're within Microsoft uh, Copilot or uh, deep research, if you're using you know, something like ChatGPT yep. or one of the other uh, uh, things like Gemini, um, they are remarkable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and, you know, just to get fully up to speed, you know, I'm... Uh, giving uh, a speech in, at a board of directors meeting for a major uh, insurance company next week. Mm -hmm. And the researcher agent really, you know, uh, I have uh, my talking points. And I can say, you know, given this, um, you know, uh, ask a researcher agent to uh, do some research on the salient touch points and uh, issues that this board of directors might be most interested in or might be really uh, most top of mind for them uh, so that we can refine uh, how I talk about right. uh, the things that I, I want as takeaways. And um, you sometimes get overwhelmed with that. The researcher agents in, uh, will come back with you know 15 pages yeah. of analysis. Yes. Um, but it doesn't have to end there with you delving into that. You can really have a conversation and then have a much better and more pertinent and relevant uh, interaction uh, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. uh, you know with that board of directors. Yeah, excellent. Those are great. Those are great personal use use cases, and I think they reflect you know using Gen AI to be helpful, but not take away your voice or your work or you know that kind of thing. It's the way. Um, you know, the way we as people kind of work together to refine a work product and kind of add AI into that, into that conversation and, uh, and have it help out. Well, I, I think, uh, of course, there's always the entertainment value of converting things into a, a cartoon or sure. a podcast as sure. well, <laughs> which I, which I still enjoy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Great, great. Well, thanks again, uh, Peter. Really uh, appreciated you having having you on the show, and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Great to be here.
Great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, that's it for this episode. Until next time. Bye.